Welcome back to SWAT Cups and round two of the Extreme Festival National Championship categories. Great to see the crowds are back in full force and they have certainly had a phenomenal day here at SWAT Cups, as they always do at an Extreme Festival. It's round two of the Comcare Polo Cup and we're in the thick of it already. The qualifying is out there. It is vitally important to get onto the front row here at SWAT Cups because everybody knows it is exceptionally difficult to pass here. And all the Polo Cup drivers are up for the challenge. Let's go and find out exactly what happened in qualifying and see what's going to happen here at round two. We've heard all weekend long from all of the Polo Cup drivers that it is vital to get onto that front row and they're all pushing hard here in qualifying. See just how difficult it's going to be out there with the amount of traffic that is available here on this just over two kilometer circuit at SWAT Cups. The arena of motorsport is always a tough one to try and get a pole position on. And they're all trying to push, of course, to try and get into the top six as well for Super Bowl. Let's find out who's got into Super Bowl. Looks like Nati and Zamanga is there. We had a really good lap. Uh, the car felt great. Uh, Keegan and the team at VW did an amazing job. The car was hooked from lap one, lap two. There was a little bit of traffic as you saw like halfway through the practice, but you know, we got the job done and now we're in Super Bowl. Dean Fenter will set them off his first time into the Super Bowl top six as well. Great driving from the right motorsport car. You can see the two team red cars of Charles Fisser and his teammate Davi Funamava have made it up there. We've already spoken to Nati Msamunga. Let's see what he can do now with Super Bowl. Looks like Clint Besaidnot has just pipped them to the line and he's the man who's going to be at the front end tomorrow in race number one. Let's catch up with the new man, Mo Karodia. You're in that mid-pack and it's a dangerous place to be in. Yeah, apparently the mid-pack is a dangerous place, but I'm not so worried because in the B-class, challenge car is <laughs> the same, so it's fine. It's much more hectic in challenge than uh, Polo Cup, I think, but I don't know yet. Let's catch up with the fastest man so far here today, Clinton Beside Note. Pole position, all sorted. Went out there for Super Pole, did that as well. So it looks like it's going to be a perfect weekend so far. Yeah, so far with the new engine and with all the team's hard work, Uncle Nick, my dad, Rodney, you know, without them we would have not been here today. And I think I've got to say thanks to them, Team Davidson. Um, the McDonald's car is always now back in the front, not like in Cape Town where we were racing at the back. But uh, for sure, I think after this round, let's first finish up tomorrow. I think after that we're going to be untouchable because the cars on rails, the team is perfect. You won't get a better team and a better lap than what I did today. Jason Lusmore also joins Team Red as a new driver coming from Oval Track Racing. Good to have him in the Polo Cup field. It looks like we're going to be in for an epic battle with some of the newcomers in that mid-pack and the front end where the championship is starting to heat up. Charles Fisser looking and searching and hunting for that very first victory. Wonder if he can get one here today. To the Mercedes note and Tate Bishop take up the front row. Nati Samunga and Fisser are second. Then you've got Davi Fadamava and Dean Fenter with Yuri Swart and Ethan Kutsia behind them. Robertson and Lupini down in 9 and 10. Martins and Loosemore, Cara Hill and Karodia. And then it's Pile and Shivi Basun at the back end of the field. They come to take up the positions with 16 cars about to go to battle for race one of the Comcare Polo Cup. Clint Besaidnot is the man to beat, and you can see just how fired up he was and how confident he was in his interview. He doesn't always like, he isn't always like that, but he's certainly looking for a chance now to show that he's got what it takes to take on the best in Polo Cup. And there's a lot of them there, including this man, Yuri, as we go on board with him on the start. Umpi Swart getting a fantastic start, but not quite at the inside like he wanted to. And Darby van is going to make him pay for that as they head down into turn one. The rest of the field comes streaming through there, picking up on Karodia and Loosemore going side by side. Just ahead of them was Jagger Robertson, their teammate. And on the brakes, here comes Giordano Lupini. Late into turn number two, trying to find a way through to follow his uh, teammate. Just one car ahead of him there as they came out of turn two. So it's uh, Yuri Swart who leads out the uh, team attack. for, uh, And we go on board here with Fisser, who's just up ahead of him. And Charles Fisser going side by side as they come out of turn three onto the back straight for the first time. Naitiam Samunga with a phenomenal start. He tucks in behind Tate Bishop. And you can see the team, two team red cars going side by side up to the top of the hill and pushing it to the limit as they get up onto uh, turn five. We're looking for a way through. They just steam train all the way to the top and it's just literally bumper to bumper stuff. As we see late breaking from Davi Funamava trying to keep out Charles Fisser. Fisser goes high and wide around turn five trying to keep... Also watch out for the bullion IT car coming through there of Yuri Swart. Umpi gives him a little tag. Oh, little touch there between the two of them. You won't mind that too much. They've had a couple of goes at that in, uh, on the past and the two Cape Town boys now. He says, yes, <laughs> I'm coming for you. Just warning him that he's uh, putting his uh, nose in where he wants to be. And you can see uh, Yuri Swart was a little bit concerned about that. Maybe he just felt that Charles Fisser 
was a bit uh, not giving up too much room as, as what he'd hoped. But as they come out of turn number seven and eight, they're now back over the line for the first lap in anger. And it's four cars into turn one. Yes, indeed. Lonica Martins with Pillay on her tail and forcing. Is that... Oh, man. Can you believe that? That is just being forced wide there for Ethan Goodsia. He had nowhere to go in the fourth of those uh, Team Red cars. Goodsia getting onto the dirt, managing to get back on again. Very lucky to not go uh, roly-poly over there because a couple of times we've seen cars get completely out of shape as they go into that section of the exit point of turn one. Pillay gets ahead of Martins due to the fact that she was getting together there and up close and personal. And is that in the background? You're all getting out of shape there big time. I think that was Shivy Bassoon who just got a little bit sideways coming out of turn four. Back up to turn five and back to the uh, second pack of cars as the leader gets away. Clinton Mercedes note putting a clean pair of wheels in there and disappearing at the front end, not showing any room for error here. He showed us and he's told us that car is on rails and it looks like that's exactly the case as Jagger Robertson now takes up the battle in that second pack of cars. As they come down the hill, we're going to watch for that second pack of cars late on the brakes. And you can see Pillay just hanging on. There's a move on the inside from Robertson. Jagger in the uh, Big Boss and Liquid Molly sponsored Team Red car. As they come across the line, looks like he might have got the drive and possibly the inside line for turn one. Is that good enough? Yes, it is. He goes on the inside of Pillay. Pillay loses out. And here comes Martins looking to pick up some pieces. Lonica Martins looking for a chance now to dive on the inside, try and find a way through. No, not quite close enough. And Bryce Pillay has to go around the whole long way through turn two as he uh, has, uh, didn't quite get up the inside of uh, Robertson. Robertson, though, is definitely charging through the field rapidly. Speaking of rapid maneuvers, here comes one from Funamava, his teammate further up the road. No livery on the side of that car yet. They wouldn't quite get enough time to get the Team Red livery onto the new car as they go to the top. But he gets ahead of Tate Bishop nonetheless, and the angry man is dropped down into third. So Darby Funamava moves himself up into second place and could possibly still have enough time to catch Clinton Beside Note. The side note, though, has got away to the tune of about four seconds and absolutely lighting this field up. There is no answer to Beside Note's pace. And whatever they've done at Davidson Racing, it's certainly paying off big dividends here this weekend. He didn't have it go his way, as you heard in his interview down in Cape Town. But he's turned his luck around here and he's definitely turned that car's ability around by the time they came up to SWAT Corps and to the Highfelt again. Cape Town boys are lining up in the background. Here's Fister's point of view on Tate Bishop, on one of his Cape Townians, <laughs> fellow Cape Townians, as they're going to turn one. Oh, look at that. A little bit of a squirrel there from the angry car. Just got a little bit out of shape. Those Dunlops are crying out as they head towards turn two. Late breaking from Fisser. Can he dive on the inside of Tate Bishop? No, Bishop shuts the door. He's not going to give him any room to play here, is he? Tate Bishop is absolutely placing that car to perfection. He does not want the second of those Team Red Racing cars to squeeze through on him. Speaking of squeezing through, oh, there's a maneuver. <laughs> Trying to find a way through there, loose more. He's learned how to turn right. He's learned how to turn left. Could see her in there too now. Could see her side by side with Cora Hill. Cora Hill in the Calix car. First time we mentioned her, but great to see her fighting so hard in that third pack of cars. There's literally three packs on track at the moment. They're all just as exciting as each other. This man, though, is not going to let anybody come close to him. And beside note, Baby Shumi, as we like to call him from karting, has definitely got his, uh, his work cut out for him in terms of just maintaining this pace. He's found the pace now. Can he keep it all together? He said he could. In his interview, he was very confident about the fact that that car was absolutely untouchable. And look at the gap he's pulled. Almost four and a half seconds ahead of the rest of the pack. Darby Funamava, who was on form here this weekend, had no answer to Beside Note. And let's see what he can do now in race number two. Can he get ahead of that pack before they get into the mix of it? More mixes there. You see Dean Fenter deep diving on the inside there for Wright Motorsport, trying to get ahead of Jagger Robertson. Robertson still beats him to the line and comes through for an eighth place to beat Dean Fenter down to ninth. Martin's just behind them, and she'll finish up in the top ten. Great driving there also from Bryce Pillay. Jason Loosemore, first attempt at Polo Cup win according to plan. And a good drive as well coming out of Kutsia and Cora Hill with Pursuit and Corodia at the back. Front end, though, is Besaid Note from Darby Funamava, Tate Bishop and Yuri Swart. Charles Fisser beats out Nottiem Samunga. It's Lupini, Robertson and Fenter with Lonica Martins in tenth. Let's catch up now with your race one winner, the Demerside Note. Full thing of this weekend, definitely, with a new engine, with a great team, you know. Without my dad, without Nick, without Rodney, with, we wouldn't have been here today in the front. And I think, like I said yesterday, with this new engine in, the boys are definitely going to struggle to beat us. Uh, I proved it now in race one. Let's now go do it in race two. Race two now for the Comcare Polo Cup. Absolutely amazing first race seeing Clinton Besedno take a victory. And great to see the Dunlop girls are here. A couple of tyre changes and maybe a couple of adjustments to tyre pressures as the heat of the day has gone away. So it's slightly different conditions. And maybe a couple of young drivers going to be making it to the front end. Maybe that little young guy as well. Let's find out now how it's going to go with race number two. 
front row is exactly like it was at the end of uh, the 2021 season. Great to see Clint Besaidno at the front end with Darby Fanamava. And they were both fighting hard as former teammates. We're on board here with the teammate of Darby Fanamava, Charles Fisser, who's looking for his first victory. And he's pushing hard into third place as they go into turn one. Good start there from Fisser. Great start from the mid pack there as well. Jason Loosemore side by side with Mo Karodia. Just behind them is Shivy Bassoon and uh, Bryce Pile alongside. Good start as well coming out of Darby Fanamava. Darby Fanamava trying to hang on for second place, but he's got Fisser right up close and personal as they come out of turn two. Here comes Lineka Martins already on the attack. Going to try and pounce there on Karodia. We go on board here with Yuri Fissa as we go through turn three. He's looking up the road to Besaidno. Note. He's looking to try and find a way past on Fanamava and Fissa. But as they come up into turn four, watch out in the background as well. Ethan Kutsia is there. Can you believe that start? Best start out of Ethan Kutsia we've seen in Polo Cup so far. Up to seventh place and on the tailpiece there of Anatim Samanga. Bringing along Dean Fenter for the ride. Giordano Lupini just behind them. And he has the first move on the cards as they go into turn five. Fissa not holding anything back here and not wasting time. Up to second place. Forcing his teammate down into third. Darby van Amava going to try and come back, but he slots in just ahead of Clinton Besaidenote. This is Yuri Swart looking up the road at Besaidenote. Besaidenote goes on the inside. He's got the drive. Has he got what it takes on the brakes to go on the inside of van Amava? Yes, he does. As they go into turn eight, GNH Transport Corner. It is a split there between the two Team Universal, Team Red Racing cars. And Yuri's saying, yeah, come on, let's go. Let's go and get him. He wants Besaidenote. He does not want Besaidenote to take a double victory here today. That is for sure. He's trying to get that number two car, of course, into a number one car by the end of this season. He finished second place last year to Leighton Free, did Yuri Swart, and he's now looking to try and reign supreme here in Polo Cup in 2022. His teammate, Giordano Lupini, just behind that. He's in about eighth place on track at the moment, just ahead of Jason Lusmore, who's fighting hard there with Jagger Robertson. Those two, of course, have come from NX Legends, and the two of them have uh, had some great battles in the past there, but great to see Jagger Robertson bringing one of his mates along, and Lusmore learning to turn left. There's three left corner corners here at Swartkops. He's got to learn, and he's done that pretty well, considering the fact that he's up into the top 12 overall in his first time out in Polo Cup. A very competitive field indeed. Little maneuver there. Dean Fenter saw it coming, shut the door. Lopini had to wait a little bit longer to try and find a way past. And oh, he's going to try around the outside. That should be interesting. Yes, he's going to make it stick as well. Lupini around the outside of uh, Dean Fenter. Fenter's had a lot more experience at this circuit than what Lupini has. And you can see why. He's able to come back and return the favor. Here comes Lonica. Lonica Martins on the inside. Three by three in a turn eight. Lonica Martins, is she good enough on the brakes? Lupini should be a little bit better on the brakes and have a slightly better line into GNH Transport Corner. Yes, perfectly done there from Lupini to keep out Lonica Martins, but she's not done just yet in that Denmark Steel Polo. As they come across the line, she's got uh, the intentions being shown here by Jagger Robertson in the Liqui Moly and Big Boss sponsored Team Red Car out of Universal Motorsport. So Jagger Robertson is now into that fight as well. And not too far behind, have a look at uh, the new man. Loosemore is into the mix as well. So he's up for the challenge as Jason Loosemore and uh, following his fellow NX legend driver around there and uh, learning the way around from Jagger Robertson. Not a bad idea considering the amount of experience he's had at the circuit. Oh, speaking of experience, look at Ethan Gutsia looking left and right trying to find a way through there on the squadra course car of Nightyam Samanga. Samanga saw him coming, shut the door firmly in his face. He's not giving Ethan Gutsia any room to play here. Gutsia will be used to that. He comes from karting. He knows how to find a blocking pass and how to get through on somebody who's trying to block him as well. Speaking of blocking, well, there's a manoeuvre. You can see Besaid note under massive threat here. And uh, he is putting the pressure on as well. Instantaneously squeezing through on Darby van Amava and finding a way through now into what is third place on track. He's got uh, Fissa up the road. And just behind him, of course, or just ahead of him, I should say, is uh, Tate Bishop, who leads things out. They haven't caught Tate just yet, but Fissa is definitely uh, looking to close that gap down rapidly as they come across the line and complete another lap. Look at the gap. It has closed down rapidly, there, as I said, between Fissa and Bishop. Bishop continuing to lead things out in the angry car and angry racing looking good for a victory here. But Fissa is definitely the fastest man on track. Look at that. He's just set the fastest lap there. Awesome stuff from him as well as they go down in towards turn two. Further back in the pack, we pick up once again. Now we're on board with Fissa. In fact, as we come out of three, look at this. There's a push to pass. He's gone for it. Can he go around the outside of Tate Bishop? Bishop's going to have slightly less amount of power and maybe not as many of those push to passes left as what uh, the man in front has now got. Yes. Cementing that and getting through for Team Red Racing, it is Charles Fisser who hits the front for the first time. He leads a Polo Cup race for the first time in his career as well as they get up to the top of the hill. Can he hang on? He's probably got about three and a half laps to hang on for, though. There's a lot of work still to be done here from Charles Fisser's point of view. All locking up into turn five. Oh, man, he's pushing that car hard. Maybe just driving in the wheels of it almost as they went into turn five. Through six, he's got Bishop on his tail and the angry racing machine is looking for a way to come back and return the favor. 
Behind that, they are lining up in the form of Besaid Note and Funamava, waiting for something to go wrong between those top two. And in fact, on this last pass, it looks like Kalim Besaid Note could possibly have a slightly quicker lap time than what we've seen out of Tate Bishop and out of Charles Fisser. Absolutely brilliant stuff from these guys. They are holding nothing back for this top three fight. Besaid Note certainly wants to take another victory, and two victories on the day will cement him at the front end of the championship. But he's got a huge amount of work to do to catch the top two from Cape Town just ahead of him. Oh, Lupini out of shape into turn one. Just a little squirrel there from them. And Dunlop tires crying out saying, yo, we've got a lot of racing today. Come on, Giordano, not so hard on us. Get us to the end of the race. Jason Newsmore right on the tail of his good friend Jagger. Behind that is Cara Hill in the Calix car. And Cara Hill is fighting with Bryce Pillay. Shivy Bassoon has lost out ever so slightly. So is Mo Karodia in the closing stages here. But not quite on the same pace as Hill and Pillay. Newsmore and Robertson have got away from her. And uh, she'll be looking to maybe close that gap down with the last two laps to go. Late breaking from uh, the Stu Davidson and Sons car of Clint Mercedes Night. And he looks to try and squeeze out Tate Bishop. He's looking on the inside. Bishop sees him coming. And there's a bit of a bang there. Ooh, very close between the two of them. We're waiting for that checkered flag to come out. But look how tight it is between these two. This is for second place. This is going to be a really hard fought battle. Coming to the line, Charles Fisser is going to wrap things up for the very first time and be on the top step of the podium for the first time in his Polo Cup career. There's the checkered flag. But watch in the background. Oh, man, alive. The Davidson car on the dirt as Mercedes tries to go around the outside of Tate Bishop and it doesn't quite work out. And right on their tail was Avi Funamava. 0.5 of a second between those three cars for second, third, and fourth place. With Swat behind them, then it was Imsamunga. Ethan could see a, a great drive there from Charles Fisser. His first victory. Let's catch up with him. I was keeping the car in mind, keeping the tires cool, not driving driving the car, and most like just taking my time, saving my four bushy passes, and then um, here we're standing, the peak of the mountain, first place today. Well, for the heat, I think, and then um, I would just like to thank Universal. Can't thank him, uh, thank, uh, thank them enough. <laughs> Words can't even come out of my mouth. Um, thanks to Dr. Johan, the whole team, Dev Robinson, my driver trainer, for keeping me behind the wheel and telling me what to do, keeping me calm, composed. And a massive, a massive thank you to my mom and my dad and my brother and my mechanic, Zefri, for really being uh, through thick and thin with me and uh, here we're standing with the number one. Number one in the championship is Yuri Swart. He hangs on by only one point ahead of Tate Bishop. The Cantonians are ruling the roost. Top three all out of Cape Town. Darby Funamava has got some work to do at the next round down in PE. Mike, I haven't had a chance to chat to you all day, but I've got to tell you something. This series is looking spectacular. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. Um, great um, great uh, field. Yeah, it's what pops again. A couple of new rookies coming to the field as well, which is also just bolstering what can be the future of the sport. Yeah, indeed. We've got some new ones this weekend, and there's there are a lot of cars out there that are that are with um, with young drivers that just are too young this year. So next year they'll be there, and uh, so yeah, we look forward to, to great things, as always, with the series.